Welcome to RV World, where we showcase state-of-the-art RVs, products, accessories, and tools. And now, here's our host, George Erdaly. Welcome to RV World Television. Hi, I'm George Erdaly. I'll be your host today. We're on location in Winter Garden, Florida at the Giant Recreational Vehicle Center. We've got a lot of things to cover in today's program. We're going to talk about some safety issues and new products to help you with that. We've also got some tools and accessories to show you. We've got all that and more today on RV World. In this segment, George talks with Rich Kiefer from Safety Plus about steering stabilizers, which are engineered to maintain straight ahead steering control. If you were to have a front, front tire blowout at highway speeds, it's going to allow you, the driver, to maintain complete control of the uh, vehicle at all times. Uh, also, under normal driving conditions, it provides what's known as center point tracking. And all that means is it wants to keep your vehicle always pointed straight down the road. This is a dual action mechanical assisted system where its dual action coil is, as you can see, if you turn it here, it compresses this way. You let go of it, it comes back to center. You turn it the other way, you let go of it, it brings it back to the center point. Uh, you brought me some video today uh, showing the, some tests that you did. Uh, can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, what we have done in uh, several locations around the country and also overseas in the international marketplace is uh, take uh, various sizes and types of vehicles and run them up to highway speed, uh, 70, 80 miles an hour, and blow the front tires with an explosive charge. And you can see through the video clips how the vehicle maintains straight ahead control without swerving out of the lane. Again, the speed of these trucks in the straightaways at well over 120 miles per hour. He has broken a steering rod. Broke the steering rod. This truck came in from between three and four turn. The steering rod broke right here. That wheel is completely removed from the other wheel. Now, what he has on here to assist him is a Safety Plus steering control. It's attached right here to this tie rod that ties the wheels together. With this Safety Plus steering control, he was able to drive this vehicle down through here even though this wheel was completely broken loose from the other wheel. Can we install one today? Certainly. Okay. Thanks for coming down and help us. Let's just go ahead and explain what we're going to be doing here. Yes, sir. It's a simple bone-on application. We take the uh, no welding or drilling needed, take uh, a fixed location on the vehicle, such as a shock mount here, bar comes out here. We'll take the two nuts off these bolts. We're going to take our safety plus bracket, the anchor bracket. It's going to be a fixed for a fixed location. Take it, slide it up on here, just a slow, and we'll replace the nuts. Okay. So no extra hardware needed on that. This will go on here just like so. All right, the unit will attach to one end of this. We have our tie rod bracket here. Just like this, angle back towards the bracket, the tie rod bracket. Just like so. All right, that's and pretty just, straightforward. Yes, sir, and as soon as we tighten everything down to specs, she should be ready to roll, going straight down the road, giving you all the protection you need. All right, I'm gonna get back and give you a little space to put that on. All right. Should this feel different or? No, sir, you should feel, the steering wheel should feel firmer, but not be difficult to steer left or right. You should just feel it, it wants to come back to center when you when you go around a turn, it'll try to help you bring it back uh -huh. to where your wheels are straight. Uh, you know, like I said, it's going to fight against anything, potholes, uh, the wind pushing against your vehicle, it's going to push against that coil and that cylinder is going to help uh, retard any action, quick action. If it's out of adjustment, you'll know it right away. It'll, it'll want to drift left or right. If I'm good as normal, most of the time we, we'll get it right the first time. So it won't turn a curve for you or uh, drive the vehicle, but it will, you'll, you should notice, a, like I said, when you're on the expressway and the trucks blow by you and create that vacuum, should notice a lot better stability. You should feel the firmness in the steering wheel. Uh-huh. So I guess if you let, let go for a second, it's still going to want to go straight. Yes, sir. Well, Rich, how did we make out? Everything checked out great, and you're all set to go. What a difference it makes, huh? Oh, yes, definitely it's makes amazing. a difference. Do you have a website people can go to? Certainly. It's uh, 
safe-t-plus.com. Okay then, thanks for your support. Thank you. We're gonna take a break right now. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to RV World. We're on location here in Tallahassee, Florida at the Camping World facilities. And to continue uh, talking about our theme of uh, safety in the RVs, one of the most important things is the wheels and tires and the balancing of those. And to help us with that, we've got an expert. We've got uh, Robert Coolidge of Centromatic. Welcome to our program, Robert. Well, great to be here. Tell us a little bit about Centromatic and your system. Okay. Centromatic's been in business since 1985. We make automatic wheel balancing systems. Now how does your system work? It's, it's a disc with uh, some, some metal that goes around? It's a, a disc with a balancing ring. Inside we have what's called Duramental. It looks like lead shot, only it's about 10 times harder. Also inside is a synthetic molly dampening fluid that's going to help uh, dampen vibration. Inside you can kind of hear the media. If you listen real close, you can hear the media inside moving. I sure can. That's kind of what it uh, mm -hmm. is inside of there. And that's what's going to automatically compensate for any imbalance in that tire and wheel. And these are uh, available for, well, I guess you specialize, started off in the big trucks, right? Yes. And of course, uh, that's very important because their tires is a big oh, expense. Absolutely. Uh, that's the second highest expense for the uh, truckers is their tires, right behind fuel. Mm -hmm. And what our system does, like I say, it makes tires last 25 to 50 percent longer, depending on the application. In motor homes, it's primarily uh, improvement in ride. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, most people are after, because a lot of times you're not going to wear the tires out uh, 20, 30,000 miles. Uh, this system is going to really help the vehicle ride better. The dishes aren't going to be rattling in the back. You won't have these uh, annoying vibrations and screws getting loose and this sort of thing. Well, I mean, my tires are balanced, you know, with when we put them on, they're perfectly well balanced. Doesn't that suffice? Well, many times it does right in the beginning, <clears throat> but as tires wear down, the balance points change too. And in all actuality, you need to have tires rebalanced about every 5,000 miles. Many times it's just not practical. Uh -huh. um, what this system does is automatically balance the wheels, the tires, the brake rotor, drum, the hub, mud, snow, or ice stuck in the wheels, rocks stuck in the tread, anything that's there, these automatically compensate for to less than a tenth of an ounce. Really? This is for the back, I guess, because yeah, we have two tires the back. in the back. It's going to actually, instead of mounting behind one wheel, you mount this in between the two duels. Oh, okay. It's a lot bigger and, of course, a lot heavier. It's got about twice the amount of media inside to, to do the counterbalancing for two tires, wheels, and the, the brakes. Okay. We ready to jack it up? Uh, I guess we are. Okay, then. Okay, well, we're about ready to break this down. We've got Mike here to help us. I'm going to slow you up. Go ahead and do your thing. Oh, okay. Do I have that jacked up too high? No, you got it. Okay. All right. So On the balancers, they install rather easily. All you have to do is line up the balancer on the studs and slide them on. Mike, let's get this uh, balancer on. It's going to mount in between the duels. And be sure when you're sliding this on to line up with this, uh, the valve stem with the one of the hand holes. That way I can access their uh, air for the inside tire. Okay. All right, let's get it put on. That's good. Okay, Robert, how'd that go? Went super. That's just, the installation just that quick and simple. Well, I think it's time to take it for a ride and see how they do. All right, then. Here we go. There's 45. It's real smooth. Well, George, what do you think about these? I think they're fabulous. I mean, I can tell the difference right away.
Well, we get a lot of comments from people. They talk about how the vehicle tracks better down the road. Uh -huh. A lot of times they can let go of the steering wheel for a change and it goes straight down the road instead of having to wrestle with it. And that has something to do with your balancers? Oh yeah. It sets up a gyroscopic effect in the tire's wheels. Oh. The more imbalanced it is, the stronger the gyroscopic effect. Wow. And on the duels, many times people don't realize the mismatched dual pressure uh -huh. is actually, actually causes more damage than both tires being low. Okay, well I'm a happy camper. Well, again, I want to thank you for your support. This, oh, yeah. We're very, very happy to do this. Enjoyed it. You made it easy. I must say that uh, the improvements that we've made with the coach, putting the steering control on and the uh, balancing system has made a huge difference. Uh, the coach feels a lot more stable at the higher speeds especially when you're going over the drops in the pavement and trucks going by. And staying with our theme, talking about safety, we're going to be talking about mirrors next. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to RV World. Uh, on this show we've been talking about safety and one of the most important items on safety issues are the mirrors. And when you're driving something nearly 40 feet long, it's good to know where you're at and who's around you. To help us with that, we've got an expert. That's Paul Hacker. Welcome to our show, Paul. Thank you. You're with Velvac. Tell us a little bit about Velvac. Uh, Velvac is a small mirror manufacturer headquartered in New Berlin, Wisconsin. That's a suburb of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're the premier manufacturer in the RV industry. We also supply mirrors to the uh, bus industry, the heavy truck industry, and, and some specialty industries, including uh, fire truck. Your mirrors kind of were developed from the trucking industry, is that correct? Yes, they were. That's where we got our start. Actually, we got our start with the, the UPS trucks. Oh, uh-huh. Okay, let's talk about the adjustment on the mirrors. What's the suggested way to do that. I've played around a little bit. I think I've got this about where I'm at, but uh, I'm, this one may need a little more adjusting. The primary adjustment is with the swing arm, so that uh, you adjust the mirror so that the entire head is visible outboard of the vehicle, okay. and then you adjust the, the, the head twisting back and forth uh, to, to get within the range of where you want to be, and then the final adjustment is done from the driver's seat. Well, um, Maybe you could help me get this one adjusted. I've got, uh, of course, I've got awnings on this side, so it, uh, I, I notice I'm seeing a little more of the awning than I think I need to. Right. Can you help me with that? Yep. Um, sure can. Good. Let's loosen that up and try to get this arm where it's where it's better located. Just a little twist to loosen that up, and then the arm will move. I think this one's still tight. Okay. Good. All right, and then this little covers for these also? Yes. All right, well, let's adjust it and we'll tighten it up and then we can put those on and, and finish it up. Okay, uh, Paul, I think this one may be in a little too far. How's it look back there? I think it is a little too far in. We should be able to see the entire mirror head outboard of the vehicle. You have to move it out just a little bit. That's good. Okay, tighten it up. Tighten it up. Go ahead and make your adjustments from the driver's seat, George. These are adjusted, of course. Uh, just throw the switch, we can press the, the port and the starboard just by doing that. They go up and down, forward, backwards. We also have a heat option, so we can heat the mirrors if you're in a below freezing situation. These are extra large mirrors. They're uh, the top of the line Velvac model that we call our VMAX head. The flat glass on this mirror is actually as large as what you'd see on an over the road Class 8 truck. It's a marker light or a signal light. It depends how it's wired. It can be wired with the uh, parking lights to burn constantly just as a marker, or it can be wired in as this one is with the turn signal. The signal mirror is a wonderful safety feature. Uh, it features a, a chevron composed of LEDs, and the LEDs are actually pointed so that the drivers alongside in the, in the blind spot see a very bright light while the driver of the RV just sees enough light to, to let him know that the signal is flashing. Another thing that's special about these mirrors, these are our bus mirrors and they're designed to stand out forward of the vehicle so they can be viewed by the driver through the windshield. You don't have to look left and right in order to look at your mirrors. You can keep your eyes on the road and see your mirrors out in front of you. 
these trim caps just snap right in. You line them up, and oh, in they go. Okay, that's simple enough. What about cleaning them? Is it okay to use a yep. glass cleaner? Standard glass cleaners are great. Uh, a, a coat of car wax over the top is going to protect them. The chrome is susceptible to being to, to corrosion, mm -hmm. uh, and that's particularly so when you're uh, near the seashore. You've got yep. salt air. Of course. Well, these certainly uh, make the coach look a lot nicer. They do. Let's talk about your website because I've been there and it, it's pretty neat. I, all I did is dialed in the uh, the year and model of my coach, and it came right up. Uh, it's easy to figure out what mirror you have on your coach. Um, you can buy replacement glass and other, other replacement components on the website. Uh, each mirror has a sticker on the bottom that t with a part number uh, showing uh, what exactly what model you have and uh, that number will help us to identify what parts you, you might need. Yep. And if you don't have the part number, you can also identify your mirror by uh, photographs. The website address is www.velvacrv.com and our 800 number is 873-8871. All right, does that cover it? I think it does. Thanks so much for your help. We're gonna take a break right now. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to RV World. You know one of the most important things on your RV are the safety items and uh, tires are one of them. And to help us with that today, we've got an expert. Uh, come on in here, Pete. Uh, this is Pete Young. He's uh, the engineer and manager with, uh, with Bridgestone Firestone. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's talk about tires a little bit. All right. What's the most important thing in the selection of the tires that for an RV owner? Well, the first thing we want to do is have one thing in mind. The safety is of primary importance, okay? And uh, in order to have the safety in the tire, we need to have the correct inflation pressure. But before we get air into the tire, we need to make sure we pick the right tire. Okay. So we would want to make sure that we look at the placard okay. on the uh, door jam of most RVs or the glove box. You pick the correct size and load range that's stated on the placard, and then have that inflated to the pressure that's recommended. Okay. It's extremely important that we have uh, the motorhomes or coaches, campers, etc., weighed at uh, commercial scales to know exactly what weight we're running on each axle so we're not overloading the tire. Okay. What's the proper way, factory recommended way to, to check your air and what's the deal with the valve stems? And I know we've got the steel valve stems here. Okay. Well, we would recommend any good quality air gauge. Uh, we would also like to use a double hook type gauge. This yeah. allows you to go in to your inside tire and pull back on your outside tire, such as on dual. Now on the dual tires, I was told that even just like five pounds difference in the pressure could could mean a lot. Well, they, they can mean a lot in two ways. One, because you're going to overload the other tire yes. and take load off the inside tire, let's say if it was low on air. Uh -huh. Also, we change the deflection of the tire slightly, uh -huh. and this can create irregular wear problems also. Uh -huh. And heat, I suppose. It, yes, and because the other tire is being overloaded, uh -huh. again, we talk about that safety uh -huh. issue. We have irregular wear and load uh, so situations. If, so if the diameter is bigger on one than the other, actually one tire is going further than the other. That's exactly right. And uh, the rule of thumb, the tire with the lower pressure at the smaller diameter will develop more irregular wear. The tire with the bigger size would end up carrying more load. That's right. Okay. Well, uh, they're gonna we're gonna mount these up with the new Alcoa aluminum wheels we've got today. Um, I guess we can go ahead and get started. When we have an opportunity like this to change our tires out, this is an excellent time to review what kind of valve stems are being used. As a general rule, anytime we're working with uh, inflation pressures of 80 PSI or higher, we would want to use a steel valve stem. Now there's a variety of stems out that have steel inserts in them, but they have also rubber grommets. Now these are okay, except that maybe in one application we'll talk about in a minute is on a dual assembly, okay? But if we have the ability to go ahead and put a steel stem on, uh, the very positive seals, etc. Now when we put the stem on, it's also important that we use a proper valve cap. Now this is a double check flow through valve cap that gives you the ability to go ahead and check the air pressure once it's installed onto the stem and it creates a positive seal. And now as we use the air gauge, 
to go ahead and plate it, we can do that, and you don't have to take the valve cap off. Oh, I see. Now this is like a one-way valve. Yeah, that's exactly so right. So you're keeping the dirt out, Absolutely. but it's easy to inflate. But it, and you don't have to take the cap off. Uh huh. All right. So that's a that's a great thing to have there. And if you are going to um, use a different type of cap, such as a standard cap, make sure usually of the chrome type that usually has a rubber insert inside. Not those plastic. We don't want those plastic guys. No. Okay, now, where this also becomes beneficial compared to this type of stem, even though this is steel reinforced, is on a rear dual assembly such as you have here. If you use this type of a stem back there, it does have a shield tank in it, but it does have the rubber grommet. And they're very hard to get to in dual wheels, depending on the hole arrangement. We're trying to get our hands in there. It's dirty inside. It's hard to see. So what we would recommend then is to use the steel stem but tie an extension onto it such as this. These are very easy to be placed onto your wheel assembly. Uh -huh. There's another type that has a pop rivet design on it. Uh -huh. But when these are attached to the stem inside, now we're able to go ahead. They're outside, they're very easy to get to, and now we can go ahead and check the air pressure of the inside tire. Okay, excellent. Finally, you've got this uh, pretty neat brochure that you published. Uh, what's it about? Well, we, we call it a remedy for trucks, RVs, and minibuses and ambulances, okay? These are all basically applications that we're working with in the motorhome industry. And uh, we have uh, articles in here about the things we talked about already today. They're uh, excellent review, uh, explaining what the placards are on your vehicle, how to choose the right size, apply rating of the tire, and inflation principles. We talk about uh, getting your uh, motorhome uh, weight at it's, it's scales, such as public scales or truck stops. We talk about even if you had to repair a tire, possibly on the road, uh, where, where to do that, how to do that. Uh, we talked about the valve stems and the extension hoses also in here, tire rotation, the proper inflation gauges, etc. So this is a valuable piece of information that Bridgestone has available to you, and it can be accessed through calling an 800 number, or if you need to, we can go on a website, and we can go to www.trucktires.com, or you can also access it through www.trucktires.com. TireSafety.com. Okay, well, it looks like they got everything put together. Okay. Did they cover it? I think so. All right. Thanks so much for your support. You're quite welcome. We're going to take a break right now. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to RV World. You know, one of the most important things on an RV is your tire pressure. Actually, on any vehicle, is maintaining the proper tire pressure. And to help us with that today, we've got an expert. Come on in here, uh, Phil. This is Phil Cunningham. He's with the Duran Manufacturing. Hi, you guys are experts in this business? We are experts in this business. We, uh, we make the uh, Duran Tire Pressure Monitoring System here. Okay. This is the RV version. And as you can see, it'll do the, both your RV and your tow vehicle on the same uh, monitoring unit and this mm -hmm. is the sensor that actually slides onto the uh, valve stem. So we just screw this onto the valve stem? You screw that onto the valve stem. So There's no taking the tire apart. Uh -huh. There's no major installation. You don't even need any tools. So what is this? A little transmitter? A little transmitter and a micro pressure sense. Uh -huh. So you can uh, put it on there. It'll actually transmit your pressure readings up to this display in the cab. So you don't even need a tire pressure gauge anymore. Okay. Well let's slide over to your display which kind of shows okay. it a little more. Yeah, as you can see, this unit will work on just about any kind of RV that you might have, from a, a Class A to a you know a, a pop-up to a fifth wheel. So you can pretty much use it on just about any type of RV. It's very flexible, and it, you can even upgrade it. Uh, you can start with one type of RV and then uh, move up to you know a bigger one. Okay, well now ours is like this. It has six wheels. We have four in the back and two in the front. Now, I know some of them have more wheels back here. Eight eight or ten wheels right the plus the tow vehicle how does that work okay the monitoring unit itself can monitor up to ten wheels on your main RV or okay. tow vehicle mm -hmm. and up to six for the uh, tow vehicle or a triple axle trailer oh I see and it's it's you know flexible it can be set up to accommodate just about any design you mm -hmm. have. okay you can move it from vehicle to vehicle if you wanted to, is that correct? Right, yeah, let's say for example you were uh, parked in your RV for a couple of weeks and you were towing your uh, Jeep behind, something like that. Well then you could just did, take... Did you say Jaguar? <laughs> Jeep, Jaguar, whatever you have. And, and if you're towing that behind, then uh, all you do is hit the front back selector switch on the monitoring unit here. Uh -huh. 
take the unit, unplug it from your RV, plug it into your tow vehicle. Right. And then you can monitor just your tow vehicle when you're out in it by itself. Okay. So it's kind of like two systems in one. All right. Well, can we go ahead and install these? Sure. We'll, we'll put them on and let you know how they work and uh, right. show you how easy it is to put in. Let's try it. Okay. And what you're seeing here is the unit in its monitoring uh, setup. So it's showing no sensors on yet. And what you do with this unit is you take one sensor at a time and you put them right onto your valve stems. And as we put this on, I have it set up for this wheel position. So all you do is put the sensor right on there and you'll hear a brief hiss of air as it goes on and begins to read. And then it seals back up. Now in just a moment, takes a few seconds and we should get a pressure reading. Okay, there we are. We've got 99 PSI in this tire and all you do is lock that tire in and you're ready to move to the next wheel position. And that's the way it programs, just that simple. You screw it on, get the pressure reading, lock it into place and it goes to the next position so that you can do the next wheel. Okay, when you have them all installed, all you do is press the up or down button. Up simply moves you clockwise around the display mm -hmm. to move to each location. Down simply goes counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got them all hooked up. Now, how do we know if they're actually working? Can, okay, can sure. you demonstrate that? Okay, as you can see, we have the one tire here on your right front, or one sensor on your right front tire is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do here is unscrew this so it simulates air loss. Hear the air coming out there, and in just a second or so, that monitor is no, going to light up, and it shows no, no pressure. There's zero pressure in our tire now. Right, because we, and that is what you will see if you were completely down, you know, if you had a complete flat. Mm -hmm. Now, we screwed the sensor back on here, mm -hmm. and you'll notice in just a second, the, the monitor will come up with the actual tire pressure again. There you are, back up to 99 PSI. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So if it changes more than 10%, the alarm's going off. Yeah. It's actually 12%, 12, but yeah. 12%? 12, 12%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Right, that makes and sense. it gives you your first, your first warning's at 12%. It's a, it's a significant but not dangerous pressure loss at right. that point. Uh -huh. And that way you know, hey, when I stop for gas, stop to eat, right. I can fill that one back up and maybe check the tire to make sure I don't have anything in the tread. That's right. Right. If it continues to go down, it'll go down like it was there before and give you an emergency warning where it comes on, it beeps really loud, it uh -huh. beeps fast, uh -huh. and also lets you know the pressure's going down in the tire. Need to pull off the road. Need to pull off the road and, and get something fixed on. immediately before you have a catastrophic blowout. Okay, excellent. Okay, now uh, the system's blinking. Does that mean it's on? That means it's on and actively monitoring. Right. So if there was a pressure leak, it would come on and warn you like we showed before. Okay. Uh, and to check your tires, mm -hmm. all you have to do is press the up button here. Yeah. And it oh. blinks on the tire that it's monitoring. Uh, in, in that case, we have your inner dual here. Uh -huh. And what I'll do is just run it around the system to see what, okay, your outer dual on that side is 106. Your inner dual on the other side, 106. Outer dual, 103. Back up to the left front, 99. And your right front at 97. And that's all you do to check your tires, which is really convenient, especially on a day like today. That's right. This front back selector switch, you can select just the back sensors. You can remove this unit from your RV, put it in your tow vehicle, and monitor just your tow vehicle when you're away from the RV. So it's kind of like two systems in one that way. Okay then, are we done? Yeah, I believe so. All right. This was pretty easy actually, and it's a nice installation. I was wondering how it would mount up on the dashboard, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have done a great job. All right then, well, thanks so much for your support. All right, George, thank you. Have a pleasant trip back. Okay. We're gonna take a break right now. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to RV World. Today we're going to be showing you how we're installing a safe landing for the uh, RV. It uh, helps getting in and out and to help with that we've got an expert. Come on up here Drew. We've got uh, 
Drew, what's Thanks your last George. name? Alan, Drew Allen. Drew Allen, that's right, I knew that. And the Sunrise Decks yes, in the sir. RV product? Yes, sir. You're out of Texas? Out of Tyler, Texas. So this is just the screws together here? Maybe? Yes, sir. These are, uh, the another thing about this deck is that it takes absolutely no tools to assemble. Uh -huh. These are all made with these uh, locking hand grips mm -hmm. and these screws that come right out. And the whole deck is put together just like that. Well, the way it breaks down, I guess I can just put it right in my in my. Well, absolutely. You break it down, we actually have uh, bags to carry, you know, about a few bags to load it all up so uh -huh. it's easy to transport as well. Okay. Now, this is modular, right? You can add on to this? Yes, sir. This is modular. Uh, another thing we tell people is some people right away can't afford. They like the big deck, but they can't afford it right away. And we tell them, you know, just go ahead and invest in the smaller model. And then later when you want to upgrade, it's, it's modular, so it expands. So you just go ahead and and uh, slip a few attachments off and it expands into the long one. Uh -huh. This is what they call the executive in that it's 45 by 90, it's longer. They uh -huh. make a smaller one, uh -huh. uh, but like I said, they um, they do anything to work with the customers. They made special decks for handicapped customers okay. and people that have had uh, dogs with arthritis. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. He made a special deck for one sure. of them. Well, hey, so. you know. We all got to get around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Drew. Sir. Uh, this one's a little bit smaller. Yes, sir. This just is as beautifully made. Mm -hmm. It's what we call our Kingston model. It's a little bit smaller for mm -hmm. people who want a uh, smaller area or just want to start off and eventually want to upgrade. Um, another thing that you know is so brilliant about the design of this product is everything is adjustable. These steps right here are very flexible. Everything is made to, to function together. Mm -hmm. These steps are adjustable, so when uh, you decide if you need to raise raise the deck up, these uh, steps will adjust accordingly. Sure, compensate for yeah. that. So if I ran for president, I could do my stump speech right here? Absolutely, we'll, we'll campaign for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as taking these locking hand grips out of the bottom on uh -huh. each side and just lifting it to the desired height and okay. then readjusting re them. We got it raised up, what do we do next here? Okay, George, we got it raised up to the highest setting. This is 29 and a half, uh, up from 14. and. Um, those actually will accommodate a trailer up to 36 inches for that, that one first step. That's, okay. the, that's right. the way you want to do right. it. And of course, when you do raise the, the setting from the bottom, you have to adjust the grade of the stairs. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and just uh, fix this last step. All you'll want to do is screw out that locking hand grip. Just like you're doing. Raise it down to the last setting. Right, okay. And it's just as easy as that. The mesh metal started because uh, in harsher climates with uh, rain and mud, it's, it's a little bit safer surface to wipe your feet off. Sure. Uh, but we, we've noticed that a lot of our RVers have uh, small animals or uh -huh. just any animal. For and the uh, wood and mecha surfaces are a lot safer for those animals coming up and down the steps. Uh -huh. a little more. And so yeah, so you can get them all wood, all mecha, or you can switch it up like we have here. You could have one step for like a, a you know, brushing your feet off coming uh -huh. up, and then you know the rest wood. Okay. Should we get on the landing? Thank you, show. Okay, it's just as sturdy as 29 and a half as it is at 14. It sure is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the other deck. You've got okay. the, the composite. Sure, sure. Uh, this is this is the the oak flooring. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we've got the new Vecca floor. This is almost too pretty to walk over. I know. The Vecca material is it's a lot more durable than wood. Mm -hmm. It's really low maintenance. You don't have to wash it as often. Um, it doesn't absorb like elements like water and sure. mildew, stuff right. like that. Another thing about the VECA is the grip is so much better. The VECA is, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth the money for the, for the amount of maintenance that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So basically, to get the deck, you just go to your website? The, the website is www.sunrisedecks.com. Okay. And um, you can look at all the information. There's a little brief history about the company, all our products, price listing. Uh, warranty information, contact information, stuff like that. What is the warranty? The warranty um, on, on the VECA material that we're now offering, that's a 20 year warranty that protects against anything that could possibly go wrong with it. Right. And we do offer on our lightweight steel frame, it is a lifetime warranty. So you're protected against that steel for the life of the deck. Pretty much. So okay. can't beat it. What's the deal with the personalized signs? I saw those on the web. Yeah, we have a uh, People really don't want to personalize their decks, get a lot more unique feel to them, a lot of individuality coming out. Um, we offer customization any way you want. Uh, people like to have their pet names on here. We make little murals like dogs or names and it just, you know, kind of fits right on the front of the deck. George's Castle. George's Castle, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Four score and seven years ago,
Welcome back to RV World. We're going to be showing you some products that you may not have seen before. I know they're new to me, and it uh, has to help with uh, the maintenance of your RV. And to help us with that, we've got somebody that probably you have seen before, and this is Sam O'Mello, Two Guys Garage. Hey, George. I've been seeing you for 14 years. I think I know you. Yeah, we've been doing that for a long time with uh, Shade Tree Mechanic and then Two Guys two Garage. Two Guys Garage, yeah. and uh, so how are you doing? I guess you have a radio show, too. Yeah, i got a couple of radio shows, one local in Atlanta and a syndicated show. been doing that for about 16 years, but I'm an avid RVer. Okay, well, good. I know you are, and you're about to, about to bring custom coach here today. We're going to... We're going to show that in a little bit here, uh, but I guess we need to get the business work out of the way. What'd you bring us here? You just got some products uh, from Ranger Design. Well, first thing we got here is the Cheaper Creeper. Okay. If you look at this, we got two of them here. I'll just take one down so you can see it. This so, is like a, instead of a creeper with the rollers on? Yeah, and it has no dimension because it's real thin. Uh -huh. it's got a handle, you can hang it up in the shop, right. you can roll it up, stick it in the storage compartment right. of your coach. The neat part is you lay this on the ground and you can lay down on it. It's very slick, you slide around on it like ice just like having wheels on your body, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're doing an oil change or just checking wires, or anything you want to get underneath the coach on, doesn't add any dimension. It's a great, great piece to have. Again, it's lightweight, you can carry it with you. And the neat thing is, if you're working on the coach and you drop something, like maybe you drop uh, nuts or bolts or your socket, mm -hmm. you're gonna see it on this, you're not gonna lose it in the ground because it's bright white. That's right, okay. It's real handy to have. Okay, well I think I should carry one of those in the motor home and probably in the, right. in the car. Now, to protect the tires, like we talked about, this is from this is landing strips. Okay. Again, it's plastic. This is for a front wheel, okay? And what you do is basically you sit, you park your coach, set these under the wheels and back up on it, mm -hmm. and this protects the coach, the tires, from pulling any of the elements out of the concrete that'll destroy the steel belts. Okay. Uh, can we go ahead and demonstrate this on your coach? Sure, we can do that. You got your big one here today. Yeah, that's our new one. Uh, it's really a pretty neat coach. We bought a uh, over-the-road tractor. It was a Kenworth T2000. Cut the sleeper off it, stretched the chassis 25 feet, and added 35 feet of motorhome to it. So how big is the actual coach part of it? Coach part of it's 35, 35. feet by eight wide, mm -hmm. of course, and uh, overall bumper to bumper, I think it actually measures 47 and a half feet. It's a, and it's got, of course, uh, double axles in the back, so it's got 10 wheels in the ground and six sets of brakes. It's a big rig. You did a beautiful job. I guess uh, uh, Diana, your beautiful wife, uh, helped design it. Or, and she handled the inside and Absolutely. you handled the mechanics. That's exactly right. All right. Well, can we get a little tour of that maybe before we're all done today? Sure, why not? All right. Well, Sam, you ready to uh, show me how these go together? There's really nothing to it. Once you find out where your coach is going to be, minus a few feet for the landing strips, you place these under your tires. Okay. Here's okay. Cool. Now we've got a set of duels here in front and rear, so we'll slide this under also. All right. You see there's nothing to it. Then we'll place the final one here up under the front tire. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and back the coach up onto it. All right. I'll go ahead and do this and you can fire it up. Yep. I'll okay. go ahead and back up. Well, that was simple enough. Nothing to it. All right, let's do this uh, cheaper creeper. You know, one of the things I was using just the other day, I was changing the oil in the uh, in the Onan generator, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I had a good blanket that I got out and all of that, and then I had to run it through the washing machine. All right. So what? Just put it in about here, man. Yeah, right about there, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I'm right right easy to move around in that. I'm right here. Look at that. No problem. Just slide right out. Got my dress costume on here today. All set. That's a great product, Sam. And I can roll this up if I want to? You can roll it up, tie a band around it, a bungee cord or something. Uh, you can store it flat in your compartment. And of course, you know, this is made of the same stuff the landing strips are. And the landing strips, by the way, are approved. They meet or exceed all the recommendations for original equipment tire manufacturers for vapor barrier. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're going to be parked for four or five days, go ahead and slap them down. Five days or more, put your trailer, like I said, your car hauler, your motor home, your, your uh, personal watercraft trailer, any of that stuff, all those tires can benefit from the landing strips. Did you bring me some for the uh, other trailer? These are yours. I'm leaving them with you, buddy. How about, uh, can we put them on the cargo trailer while you're here? Absolutely. Can you help me back it up? Sure. Okay. Let's go over there and do that. Oh, so you got a, a nice little enclosed trailer here, and you use this for your construction supplies. I'll bet you you don't uh, do. move it a lot. I do. Actually, I've got a jet ski in here from uh, from the, when I was moving. Uh, we need to get it out of here, but uh, yeah, these have been sitting there. I know it's not good. Right. Well, you can see the marks on this ground where this truck, this trailer has been in different places. Yeah. So again, now we can go forward on this one. Yeah. So we just set our landing strips here. Now this one here, 
What you may need to do is pull forward, I'll slide this one under, and then you back up. Because these tires are so close together. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Pull, pull, pull what you got. That looks like the landing strip's in the right place. All right, come on back. Come on back. Whoa! Perfect. Your tires are protected. That simple. Now, these are Ranger Design. Do they have a, a website, I suppose? Yes, rangerdesign.com. Mm -hmm. And it's also an 800 number. Okay. And I guess they could go to your website if they couldn't figure that out. You've yes. got a huge website. Sure, you click on to samsgarage.com and go down to uh, the site map and you'll find landing strips there because I'm a big supporter of them. I use them on my custom cars, my hot rods, my motorhome, obviously, and even my uh, uh, open car hauler. Okay, then. Does that cover it? That covers it. Thanks so much for your support. Thanks, George. Really, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, sir. We're going to take a break right now. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I think we got a new star here, Sam. Yep, that's old Sparky. She's hey. a good traveling dog. Hey, Sparky, what's up with you? Well, tell me about your truck. This uh, this wasn't new, I guess, right? No, it wasn't new. You know, you can buy these all built, brand new. But you know, this truck probably $125,000 new. I found a good used one and uh, did a little work on it. It's a Kenworth T2000, an over-the-road tractor. We had to cut the sleeper off it, have the chassis stretched, you know, which is a little involved. But still, you know, it's got a 14-liter Cummins in it, mm -hmm. and it's a nice truck, and it drives down the road great. And you got. It's designed to haul 80,000 pounds. We weigh right at 40, so we're in good shape. So you actually sectioned the, the frame on it? Yes. You took the fifth wheel off, threw that away, right. sectioned the frame, and then they added that in there. You had that professionally done, I guess. Oh yeah, professionally done by a frame shop. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a 12-inch channel, and uh, it's double wall. And they moved the rear axles back. It's got twin screw rear axles in mm -hmm. it. And uh, for, you know, it's a 40,000 pound rear, 12,000 pound front, so it's plenty to handle this thing. Okay, and then you had the body built. Right. Right, the conversion company up in Middlebury, Indiana, they do these kinds of things. It's a small, family-owned company, they do a great job. And it's built out of steel frame, has a 063 aluminum skin on it. Mm -hmm. You can see we even have a garden window. That window folds out and goes back in. I just noticed that, I didn't see that one before. Yeah, it's a nice addition. And you've got awnings out here? Yep, we have an awning over the slide, you have an awning over every window. Uh -huh. We have an electric awning on the other side, where you enter into the doorway. And um, it has all the amenities, storage, has docking lamps. And it's just a big white box out here because we uh -huh. haven't painted it yet. Uh -huh. Working on a paint scheme, but inside, really nice. Well, can we look inside? Yeah, let's take a look. All right. Which way do you want to go? This, this way. way. Okay. So, uh, how's the cruise down the road? Can you, 70, it, 70 feels good? 70 oh, miles? yeah, it drives great, you know. Uh, and it's in great shape, good wheel balance. So, mm -hmm. it's 70 miles an hour, the speed limit is comfortable. And you can see, it's just like a regular coach outside. We've got a door and a door handle. This is lit up. Of course, we have outside lights. We have an awning, awning over all the windows. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead inside. All I right. think you'll be surprised. I'm gonna take my shoes off, okay? Please I do. I don't want to wear. Back in. Got a nice little place right under the steps to stick our shoes. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, they did a nice job. Oh man, this is beautiful. Wow. Yeah. They did a pretty nice job, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. So Diana designed all this? Absolutely. She picked out the Corian. Picked up the faucets, the lamps on the ceiling, the placement of the bevel mirrors, and of course, you know, it's all solid oak, it's a honey oak. And she designed the layout of where the couch, then this, the sitting area, the dinette, and of course... You must have a 10-foot countertop. Yeah, they, this is one of the biggest kitchens they made. We moved the door forward. See, it's a clean sheet of paper, uh -huh. so you can design yeah. it yourself. Put in this type of dishwasher. This is a new Australian dishwasher. It's like a drawer. My wife will love it for me showing dirty dishes, but... Uh, that holds a lot, does a great job. Yeah, at least you have a place to put them. Yep. Got the microwave convection oven, mm -hmm. two burner glass cooktop. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Got lots of lighting, as you see, double door refrigerators, mm -hmm. okay, with ice maker and so on. Got plenty of pantry space. And if you walk back here, you know we've got lighted closets, and these are lined with cedar. No kidding. Yeah. You open that up, and the lights come on. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, and you can see. And the lights are automatic. Lights are automatic, and nice the door stuff. switches. Uh -huh. Below that, and you'll notice that all of these are. Latching. Oh, that's your uh, uh, washer dryer. I just put that uh, uh, Splendid in in my coach. Boy, that's a wonderful thing. Sure, when you're on the road a long time, that's real handy. And of course, we've got a 41-inch uh, shower, mm -hmm. real big, got a tower, uh, a tub in it, mm -hmm. and of course, have a skylight over it. We get a, a bath here with a vanity, and of course, a corner uh, shelf. And then we have a separate uh, water closet right there. 
What's this thing down here? Oh, that central vac. Central vac? Sure. You pick that up and it turns on automatically and you have a hose that'll go the length of the coach. So it's placed midships, 20 foot hose gets the inside of a 40 foot coach. Exactly. You know? And then of course, this is our master bedroom. Mm -hmm. We have a queen size bed. Got the flat screen TV. It's got its own air unit. Got some storage units here. And these are above here. So it gives you plenty of storage. We've got more storage here. You've got end tables. And we've got our Bose Wave CD. So it's a really nice coach to spend a lot of time and have some fun in. Uh-huh. Nerve, nerve outfit here? Yeah, this is the entertainment center. Of course, you have your satellite control. You've got a nice Sony uh, VHS. We have our DVD player. Of course, you select as to which TV it goes to. Here's the automatic panel for the gen set. This is your power steering. And of course, this is your tank monitors. What's down here? This is a wine cellar. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it had a nice little place down there. And of course, it opens up. And a bottle of wine or two in there, and maybe a, a cold drink. That's right. Handy little thing to have. You know, you try to make it just like home. Of course, it is your home when you're on the road. That's the beautiful thing about RVing. That's right. So oh. basically, what you've got is a, a custom coach that you build it just exactly the way you want it. And probably for, I'm not going to say how much, half of what it would cost. Well, a lot maybe, less maybe. than some of the real high dollar coaches. You know, this is our fourth coach. Mm -hmm. And what we actually did, the last coach we had, which was a Winnebago product, we loved everything in it. We built this. We actually took that coach and said, we want those ideas in here. Mm -hmm. And it all worked out great. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful unit. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with this. And sure. one of the races and all of that. There's nothing like a motorhome. It sure is. Well, I guess we had enough fun today, huh? Sure did. You got to go, go back and be on the radio tomorrow? Yes, yeah, sure. Tomorrow morning, got two radio shows to do, so I got to head on back down the road. All right. Thanks so much for your help. My it's pleasure. Great Thank to work you. with you. Great to work with you, George. We're going to take a break right now. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Glad you spent time with us today on RV World Television. Till we see you next time, happy RVing.